Izuku wasn't stupid. He knew that being in first place in the obstacle course and the bearer of 10 million points made him everyone's target. He knew that performing towards the top of the class consistently, no matter how many times it was due to coincidence slash luck, made him Ida's target. He knew that being All Might's somewhat secret pupil made him Todoroki's target. He knew that being born had somehow made him Bakugu's target. But holy hell, did he not expect the stampede headed his way. Get the 10 million. The battle cry of 38 people washed over Team Midoriya as they apprehensively watched every other team charge them from all directions. Luckily, the number of attackers didn't mean much in the way of the strategy, Tokoyami, let's go up. On it. Dark Shadow. Tokoyami called his sentient quirk, which promptly pushed the entire team up at great speed, thanks mostly to their lack of weight. Izuku grinned as the group sailed over the awestruck crowd of first years, wow. Yurarika, you're the best for making us float. Her permablush deepened, I it's nothing, you know. From the ground, a topless Hagakure groaned, man, no fair that they can fly. Jiro, get them. Sporting a furious blush at her rider's state of dress, the bobcut rocker complied, it's not like you're hiding the headband or anything by being naked. She launched her jacks at the floating team Midoriya. Dark shadow chirped, incoming. Moving quickly, he knocked the jacks back and resumed circling around the slowly descending team. Midoriya grinned. With Yurarika making everyone but her weightless, Tokoyami in dark shadow keeping up our sides and rear, and Aoyama giving us offense and defense in the front, we have a fairly solid formation. Tisk, damn it. Jiro cursed as she retracted her jacks. Hagakure reassured, don't worry. We'll get them next time. Hagakure, where's the headband? Sato tentatively asked, dread filling his mind. From behind, Monoma chuckled as he twirled a headband around his finger, these class A kids really need to get better at multitasking. And just two minutes from the start, the field is complete chaos. Present Mike shouted, fists shaking in excitement. Landing with a soft thud, Team Midoriya quickly made haste away from the chaotic crowd of students. Hopefully everyone else will distract each other for a little while longer. Then we can. An object sailed right past Izuku's face, disrupting his concentration. What the he dash? Shoji was charging the team, his arms wrapped around his back like a protective barrier. From a small opening, Midoriya could barely make out two figures. Who, is that even allowed? My Doriria. The frighteningly decent signing voice of UA's resident grapist filled the air, I'm coming for you. A torrent of purple balls sailed towards Team Midoriya. Acting quickly, Dark Shadow smacked them aside as fast as he could, using his non-corporeal form to avoid the adhesive effects. However, a famously long tongue darted out, nearly seizing the headband off of Midoriya's head if not for a well-timed, Sharingan. Izuku ducked under the tongue and grabbed it. Oh this is disgusting. Sorry Azui, he pulled on the tongue, earning a yelp from behind Shoji's barricade, no ku Midoya, Ibi. Ha, huh, guess she's gonna have a bit of a lisp for a while. Sweat dropping while wiping his hands on his pants, Midoriya ordered, Aoima, can you fire at the ground a bunch? If we make lots of potholes around us, it'll make it difficult for everyone to get close. Even if you share the rider's weight, the carrying formation's hardly comfortable, especially on rough ground where weight distribution is everything. It's not much, but it'll at least buy us some time against everyone else. The pseudo-Frenchman twinkled, we. Oui. I'll try not to outshine you three. Aoyama fired several short bursts of his naval laser at the ground, Yurarika helpfully pivoting for him as the group's center of mass. After only a few moments, the ground was littered with potholes and foot gaps for a 30-foot radius all around the team. Tokoyami mused, HM. I see the point of this strategy, but how effective would it be against someone with greater dash? DKU. Bakugu roared as he blasted over the obstacle and straight for Izuku's head. Mobility. Tokoyami sweat dropped as Dark Shadow rocketed forth like a shield, just in time to block one of Bakugu's explosions, albeit with a shriek. Tisk, damn it, Bakugu. What did I say about blasting off like that? Siro commented irritated as he used his tape to pull the ashy blonde back onto his, Mina, and Kurishima's interlocked arms. The redhead huffed, man, at least give us a heads up when you pull that kind of stuff. Midoriya sighed with relief, man, that was too close. That's the downside of this strategy, we can keep everyone at bay and stop them from sneaking up on us, but that means that we have to stay in this one spot. Man, I really wish we had more in the way of mobility. Yurarika nodded, plus, I think that explosion scared Dark Shadow. She nudged her head towards the cowering spirit, 
currently muttering scripture in Sanskrit to ward off evil. Sorry, but Dark Shadow doesn't do well against Bright Lights, remember? That's why you asked us to keep away from Aoima and his quirk as well. Tokoyami reminded with a grave tone. I remember. Izuku reassured, wiping some sweat from his brow. Looks like most of the other groups are staying away from us now that we have the field trap set up. It's almost halfway through at this point, we can do this. And that's 7 minutes. Let's look at the standings. 1. Team Midoriya, 10,320,000. 2. Team Monoma, 1,355. 3. Team Tetsutetsu, 1,015. 4. Team Todoroki. Huh? Where did Team Monoma come from? Bakugo clenched his fists in rage as the Class B blonde boy quickly seized his headband. Really, Class A? It's almost too easy. Monoma waved condescendingly to the stunned Team Bakugu as he turned to face Team Midoriya, I know I said we should keep a low profile, but, Tsuburaba, create some platforms, will ya? Let's get the 10 million. Kaibara looked up in surprise, eh? You sure Monoma? It was your idea for Class B to stick to the sideline, I mean. The blonde shrugged, I mean, why should Class A hog the spotlight when they're leaving themselves all open like that? With little reason to disagree, Team Monoma charged forward, Tsuburaba creating a path over the potholes with a few quick puffs of solid air. Bakuku, meanwhile, was seething in rage. First, they take my headband, then they go after. My kill. Fuck that. Kurashima, let's kill, M. Midoriya, on our left. Tokoyami called in a panic. The greenette blanched at the sight of his newly crowned least favorite blonde and his posse. I can't see what they're walking on, even with the Sharingan. But right before they take a step, that guy in front with the brown hair exhales in at the ground. I'd say he has some sort of propulsion quirk but considering that their feet looks like it lands on something, I'd guess that his quirk can create platforms out of thin air. That means that wherever he can aim his breath, he can defend. But it also means that he's limited based on how fast he can exhale. Midoriya waited for the front horse to exhale and ordered, Aoyama, fire straight ahead. We. Aoyama quickly launched a beam right as Tsuburaba created another platform over the potholes. For a moment, it looked like Team Monoma would have to avoid the attack and lose their momentum. Unfortunately, the naval laser collided with something in the middle of the air and dissipated. W what? Izuku started sweating. I timed Aoyama's attack perfectly. I even used the Sharingan for it. There's no way he could have created an air shield while he was focused on the ground. Yeesh, Tsuburaba. Looks like Midoriya's got some good timing. Monoma whistled as he cracked his neck. The brunette sighed in relief, good looking out, Monoma. Huh. Monoma did that? What's his quirk? Yurarika asked, Deku, did you see what he did? Izuku nodded, it was kind of fuzzy, but I think I saw him dash. Oi, fuckface. Bakugu roared as his team jumped over the stage traps, Deku's mine. And so's that headband. Monoma sighed as the other blonde approached with an explosion at the ready, man, class A is just so predictable. At the last second, he deflected the blow and almost immediately countered with an explosion. Oh, that feels fun. That's a nice quirk, Bakugu. Monoma rubbed his hands with a cocky grin. What? He has the same quirk as you, Bakugu. Mina exclaimed as her team pulled back after that last attack. Yurarika cocked her head, but how does that make sense? Izuku clenched his fists, that guy, the way he blocked Aoyama, how he countered Kaken. Bastard. Bakugu roared as he fired another explosion straight ahead. This time, however, it collided with something in the air and made a distinct shattering sound. Again with the solid air. He's a copycat. Bakugu growled, angry realization dawning on him. A quirk that lets you copy other quirks. Sounds problematic. Midoriya, I think we should retreat. Tokoyami advised, also eyeing another team that seemed dangerously focused on his own. Izuka nodded, sounds good. Yurarika, can you keep up your quirk? She flashed a grin, yes sir. Then let's get out of here. The team barely made it out of their own trap, courtesy of Dark Shadow, before they came face to face with another enemy. Todoroki's heterochromic eyes narrowed, going somewhere, Midoriya. Bakugu growled as one of the Class B students launched some kind of cement-like substance at Kurashima's legs, trapping the entire team. Oh hey, Bondo. How's it going? Monoma waved to the man with a sand castle for a head. 
Monoma, with all those headbands, you'll move on for sure. Let some of us have a go. The blonde shrugged, sure, why not? Though you're not gonna get anything from this one. He jerked a thumb towards Team Bakugu, I already cleaned them out. Mina exclaimed, okay, I melted through it. Kurishima rolled his leg appreciatively, thanks, Mina. Bakugu, what's the move? Bakugu cracked his knuckles, I ain't gonna lose to this jackass. I still gotta kill Deku and that half and half bastard. Raccoon eyes, lay down some slime in front of us, why don't ya? And weird face, use that tape to pull us towards those class B bastards. The pinkette growled as she started spraying some mild acid, my name's Mina Ashido. And mine's Hanta Siro. Whatever. Manoma looked towards Team Bakugu, currently sliding straight for him, oh, looks like the celebrity's coming for blood. Funny though, I thought after last year, you'd be sick of slime. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy this. Bakugu growled, Kurishima, head smashed through whatever walls they put up. The redhead grinned toothily, got it. He hardened his upper body in preparation for a collision. I'm gonna leave this to you, Manoma. Bondo said nervously as he backed away from the murderous, team, Bakugu. Manoma exhaled, man, I really didn't want to put up with you for this long, but... He fired several explosions in his opponent's path, I won't deny how much fun this is. However, Team Bakugu pulled through the smoke, much to his surprise, you call that an explosion? You're like the rest of your class, just a shittier version of the real thing. Tisk, Tsuburaba. Manoma ordered as he and his classmate created two layers of solid air as defense, only for Kurishima to barrel straight through. Tape face, on my mark. Bakugu ordered as he swung at Manoma with an explosive haymaker. At the last second, Manoma managed to graze Kurishima and instantly hardened, defending against the attack, whoops. Sorry to waste your dash. Die. Bakugu roared as he brought both hands down over Manoma's head. But once again, the copycat hardened and blocked the attack with both arms. Seriously, you just never dash. Now let's kill DKU. Bakugu ordered as he unstuck the headbands from Siro's tape while his horses charged for the current winner. What? Suburaba deadpanned. Manoma's jaw dropped. While I was focused on Bakugu, while my hands were up, he had that one guy use his tape to grab the headbands from my neck? The class B was silent for a while until Kurwaro commented, Fuck you, Manoma. Eri cocked her head when she saw Team Manoma's name get replaced by Team Bakugu on the scoreboard, that one, Manoma. Inko looked at her daughter, Oh, you met him already? The younger girl nodded, Hmm. <laughs> He had a weird voice and I don't think he liked Deku and I I very much. Oh. Inko commented in surprise, why not? Eri shrugged, I don't know. But Baku and I I called him, an Aryan, something. Inko paled as she felt a few onlookers stare at her and her daughter, S sweetie, let's not say that word in public, oh okay? This is bad. We're completely trapped now. Izuku wiped the sweat from his brow as Todoroki finished constructing a wall out of ice, effectively sealing the two teams in a small area by the field boundary. Todoroki exhaled mist and rubbed his right arm, Ida, get us in as fast as you can. Kaminari, keep Tokoyami at bay. Yayorozu, you distract Midoriya while I get the 10 million. I doubt this'll work on the first try, but... Without hesitation, the three horses complied, Ida providing some much-needed speed through his engines while Yairozu and Kaminari relied on skates to minimize impeding the former's movements. Tisk, they're not waiting around. Aoyama. Izuku commanded. Art of seduction. Aoyama grunted as a powerful beam shot through the air and collided right in front of Ida, forcing the speedster to skid to a halt and move to the side. Ida grit his teeth, sorry, everyone. His naval laser's speed caught me off guard. Doesn't matter. Just keep trying. Todoroki narrowed his eyes. As I thought. I can't defend against Aoyama without my ice, but that would get in Ida's way. The best thing to do is keep up the assault until he reaches his limit. Midoriya's Tomo were spinning like a power drill, everyone, try to stay on Todoroki's left side. I can't find any noticeable weak points on any of them. And the ice wall is so tall that even if we could push over with Dark Shadow's help, Kaminari would have plenty of time to zap us and take him out. We just have to defend with whatever limited mobility we have. G got it, Deku. Yurarika nodded, slightly panting. H huh? Yurarika, are you okay? Deku asked, noticing his teammate's labored breathing. She smiled, but it was clearly forced, doing great. 
little winded us all. Liar. She and Aoyama's belt are the only things weighing us down so she's basically in charge of weighing us down and stopping us all from floating away. Of course this be difficult for her. And keeping her quirk active continuously must also be really hard. Eurarika, if you need to turn your quirk off, go ahead. We only have 3 minutes left anyways. She shook her head and flashed a determined grin, sorry Deku, but you and Ida, everyone's giving it their all. Like you said, I'm not gonna fall behind. I'm gonna shoot for the win with everything I've got. Damn it, that sounded way cooler coming from her. Gotcha. Izuku smiled back before turning his attention back to his opponents, whose attempted assaults kept getting thwarted by an increasingly weary Aoyama. Todoroki's eyes narrowed. They're keeping to my left. Midoriya knows I'm not using it and since I can't fire my eyes straight without hitting Ida in front, I'm sorely limited. Todoroki, you're trying to wear Aoyama down, yes? Yayorozu asked as Ida steadied himself after yet another failed attack. Hmm. The dual quirk user cocked an eyebrow. She catches on quick. We don't have time for attrition. We need to do something fast. How fast can you trap them in ice? Yayorozu held up an arm as it began to glow. Todoroki shook his head, doesn't matter. They're keeping to my left side so I can't dash. I'm aware. Use this. Izuku's eyes narrowed from afar. What are they saying, I can't hear them, but I still know, how? She held out the object she created, a metal rod, just like how we trapped the other teams earlier. Channel your ice through the rod instead. The stoic team grasped the metal pole and nearly smiled, not bad at all. He turned towards his opponents and glared. Midoriya, time to finish this. Let's go. Izuku's eyes widened. The Sharingan, I can read lips. And they're gonna use that stick to avoid hitting Ida. Aoyama, Tokoyami, I need you to destroy that rod in Todoroki's hand. They're gonna use it to trap us in ice. Tokoyami looked at Izuku quizzically, huh? How do you know? Trust me. The other two didn't seem too sure, but they complied with the request. Aoyama's beam missed its mark, but threw Team Todoroki's rhythm off, allowing Dark Shadow to swoop in and go for the rod. Unfortunately, Kaminari was still on Tokoyami duty and held out a sparking hand to repel the shadowy being. Izuku cursed, damn it. Now! Todoroki jammed the rod into the ground and instantly froze much of the ground in front of them, sparing Ida while still enveloping Midoriya's left side in ice. As long as he's stuck, they can't go anywhere. While Team Midoriya was startled by their sudden entrapment, Ida flexed his legs as hard as he could, recognizing the opportunity before him. Recipro burst. The flames from engine turned bright blue and, in a flash, Team Todoroki rocketed past Midoriya's, allowing Todoroki to quickly seize the headband. And just like that, Team Todoroki takes first place. What a development. Present Mike cheered, his heart racing from sheer excitement. Aizawa's eyes narrowed, it looked like Ida suddenly shifted to a higher gear at the last second to take advantage of Team Midoriya's momentary surprise. That was at a different level than anything I've seen, though. Does he have something greater than third gear? Meanwhile, All Might gripped his chair tightly as he saw Team Midoriya shift to sixth place with zero points. Young Midoriya. Below the teacher's box, Inko was reflooding the stands with her wails while Eri shifted uncomfortably, her heart sinking at her adoptive brother's shocked expression displayed on the stadium jumbotron. That, that was, I didn't even see that coming. Izuku shook as he turned to Team Todoroki with a ghastly look. There've been a few times when the Sharingan couldn't keep up with someone but, it was like I didn't even see Ida move at all. Todoroki let out a breath he didn't know he was holding and slowly tied the 10 million around his neck, carefully shuffling all his headbands and flipping them around just in case, Ida, what was that at the end? Ida panted, sorry for the surprise but when I saw them trapped, I thought it best to take advantage of the situation. I used my special move to increase my speed to its limit. I'm just glad you were able to grab the headband in that split second. Todoroki looked down and noticed Ida's smoking exhaust pipes and the slight redness to the metal. Your quirk, is it good to go? Unfortunately, I'll be down for a few minutes or so. It might go faster if you cool my engines down, though. TSK. There's less than a minute left. No point in doing that. Might as well just play defense now. It's just Midoriya, anyways. Izuku looked at his arm trapped in ice, then to his exhausted team. Aoyama's about to collapse. Yurarika's gonna throw up at any second. Dark Shadow's crying about Buddhism. 
and there's only 45 seconds left, this is it, he hung his head and tried to hold back the tears that stung his eyes. Come on, everyone. Let's get our points back. Yurarika shouted. Yurarika. Izuku whispered. Oh we, I can't stop twinkling now, not after coming so far. I should keep that phrase in mind. Despite my preferences, it'd be a shame for us to give in to darkness while we're so close. Izuku tightened his right fist and exhaled deeply, you guys, let's get our headband back. With a grunt and growl, Izuku concentrated one for all into his trapped left arm and jerked it. Todoroki could only watch as the ice seemed to glow like an emerald before it completely shattered, leaving only powdery snow and a slightly raw-looking arm smoking in its wake. Midoriya, how did he do that? Yayorozu and Kaminari, keep them back however you can. Everyone, let's go. Izuku pounded his fists together and activated full cowl. Team Midoriya ran at full speed towards the handicapped team Todoroki, their eyes practically blazing with determination, or stars, if your name is Yuga Aoyama. Those guys, they're so determined, they can't possibly win but they're still gunning for it, Todoroki instinctively leaned back and hovered his hand over his headbands defensively. Yayorozu prepared another staff and held it at the ready, I'll take out their footing and throw them off. Yurarika and Aoyama are exhausted, so it shouldn't be too hard. Kaminari, keep Tokoyami away. Yeyi. Kaminari rubbed the snot from his nose, his eyes twitching from quirk overuse. However, Izuku's eyes weren't spinning pointlessly. They're gonna take out the horses. So I'll just take them out of the equation. Even if Todoroki shuffled the headbands, the Sharingan can keep track of which is which. Let go of me. Without hesitation, the horses released their grip on Izuku, allowing him to jump off of their arms like a springboard, right for Todoroki. I'm still under Yurarika's quirk so I don't even need to worry about falling. Tokoyami hissed, did he have to jump at full strength? Aoyama groaned, now Mon arms hurt with Mon's stomach. Go Deku! Yurarika cheered, leading the remaining team to a safe spot away from the opposing team. Todoroki's eyes widened as the greenette rocketed towards him. No way, Yayorozu. On it! She created a large paddle from her arm, only to get it knocked away by Dark Shadow's claws. I told you Todoroki. I'm gonna reach for the top spot with everything I've got. Izuku shot past Todoroki's left side and wrapped his hand around all three headbands on his neck. However, in that split second, flames enveloped the dual quirk user's left shoulder and arm. Yelping, Izuku released all three in surprise and crashed into the ice wall Todoroki made earlier. No. Izuku cried as Ida ran away as fast as he could without his quirk. Todoroki could only stare at the flames on his body in shock, numb even to Yairozu and Ida's words or Kaminari holding up the 10 million points he retrieved with a hei. My left side, my promise. He extinguished the fire and stared at Midoriya with venom. Midoriya. Dark Shadow pulled the floating Izuku off of the wall and carried him to Team Todoroki at full speed, let's go again, but peacefully. Izuku nodded, remembering his own team's expressions of determination, yeah. We won't stop until it's over. He felt a burning pain in his eyes. Crap. Is this my time limit? Doesn't matter, I have to push through. At that moment, the ice wall exploded, Deku. Half and half. Bakugu rocketed forward, hands extended menacingly. Todoroki. Izuku roared as his body crackled with the lightning of full cowl. Time. The stadium fell silent, save for Bakugu's rather loud thud. Then it erupted into cheers, and that's the end of the cavalry battle. Let's announce the results. Izuku felt numb as Dark Shadow lowered him to the ground. I, failed. I didn't get a single point in the end. In first place, Team Todoroki. Todoroki sighed and removed his headbands, seemingly dissatisfied with the result. First place, does that even mean anything at this point? If I didn't use my left, Midoriya would've won. Then in second, we have, huh? Team, Shinso. The purple-haired class C student smiled darkly while his teammates scratched their heads over the events of the last 15 minutes or so. Meanwhile, Team Tetsutetsu was too busy drowning in sorrow, despite Kendo's best efforts. H hey, come on, guys. Chin up. Shiazaki groaned, is this karmic retribution for taking the short boy's points? She recalled how she used a vine to slyly remove Mineta's headband. In third place, Team Bakugu. Kurishima could only chuckle, I don't know if Mr. Indisputable First Place is necessarily happy about that. Damn it. 
Bakugo roared as he pounded the ground into dust. Then in fourth, Team Midoriya, with zero points, which is also the score of all the remaining teams, um, we have a problem, alright, I'm calling lunch while midnight and I try to fix this mess. Izuku felt like crying, but his teammates clapped his back. He stared at them with teary eyes, why you guys, I'm really sorry. I thought I could grab them, but, I messed up. Tokoyami sighed, I won't lie I'm disappointed in the result, but we gave it our all. Though if Todoroki hadn't flared up at the last second, Dark Shadow would have successfully grabbed at least one of the headbands. Yeah, we gave it our all and that's what matters. Yurarika cheered, though the slight shaking in her fists belied her frustration. Even as they walked off the field, she felt her heart sink with each step. Yurarika, would you like to eat together? Ida waved to her, also, well done on an exciting match. Oh, thanks. You too. But man, I can't believe you could go that fast, Ida. I don't know what happened, you were so quick. Yurarika yelled, rapidly waving her hands in her friend's direction. Adjusting his glasses, Ida replied, well I was saving it to use against Midoriya or Todoroki, so I figured the time was then. Maybe you'll see it again in the next round. Speaking of Midoriya, where'd Deku go? In a nearby hallway marked, staff only, Todoroki stood opposite to Izuku. Shaking, the greenette nervously broke the ice, so, you wanted to talk. We're gonna miss Dash. You overwhelmed me today. Lunch. Todoroki looked at his left hand and clenched it, so much so, that I broke my promise. Using his left side would basically double his strength. I definitely wouldn't have stood a chance last round if he did. So why doesn't he? When you sailed past me and grabbed those points, I felt that same pressure I did when I saw you at USJ. And the only other time I've felt anything like that was around All Might. Oh crap, he knows. Todoroki looked at Izuku and narrowed his eyes, Midoriya, I don't know why you're keeping this a secret, but... Oh god, no. You're All Might's dash. Here it comes. Love child, right? Eh. It'd explain why your quirks are the same. Save for the weird eyes. You think that I'm All Might's illegitimate son? Any momentary glee at the idea was quickly replaced with panic, and no, no. Of course he's not my dad. Todoroki turned his head and raised an eyebrow, you sure? Then why is he so interested in you? I it's just cause we have similar quirks. Like Ajui said on the bus a while ago. I mean, I know this is probably what I'd say if I actually was his illegitimate child butrially I know tanded just because house hand I both have a strength quirks and oh my god this isn't convincing it'll dash. Whatever. Todoroki shook his head disbelievingly, but decided to change the subject, probably just to stop Midoriya from passing out, you know, endeavors my, dad. There was a particular bite to that last word. Izuku nodded, already familiar with this fact. The number two hero, since you're connected to the number one hero, that's all the more incentive to demolish you. Endeavor sneezed as he walked down the stairs. Rubbing his nose, he flashed back to the last two events of the festival and felt his blood boil for a reason besides his flames. Shoto, this stunt of yours has gone on long enough. He took a deep breath. Calm down, Enji. Getting fired up right now won't do anyone any good. Yo, Endeavor. Suffering is all I get in this world. All Might. The number two hero turned to the number one hero, standing atop the stairs the former just descended. Hmm. How symbolic. It's been a long time. How about we get some tea and catch up? You could join us all in the teacher's box. How's that sound? Endeavor snorted, seriously. As if I'd take time from my life to spend it with you and those washed up cosplayers. He turned back to the rest of the stairs, only to be met with a large man in a blue suit accompanied by a whooshing sound. Now why so serious? You know who said that quote, right? PSH. No reason to be so cold. I hate everything about this man. I actually wanted to talk about young Todoroki. He was quite impressive for only using his right side. He's clearly well trained. Endeavor was silent, but his eyes narrowed suspiciously. I actually wanted some tips on how to best train the next generation and since you've clearly done such a good job with your son, I dash. Save it. I'm not here to help you. I'm just here to watch him surpass you. All Might didn't say anything, but he felt a bead of sweat run down his neck at the evident hostility on Endeavor's face. Sure he's being a brat right now, but he'll come around. And then he'll become the next number one hero. That's why he was born, after all. 
DD demolish? Izuku paled at the phrasing. Todoroki continued unimpeded, my dad's a bastard in every sense of the word. Once he realized he couldn't beat the symbol of peace, he decided he'd just have to make a hero that could. Why are you telling me this? He sighed and looked down, his expression tightening like the words themselves were painful, you know what a quirk marriage is? Izuku hesitantly nodded, recalling the term from a history class, why yeah. My father found the perfect quirk to match his and started a family with that woman, my mother. My siblings and I are all the result of my dad trying to get that perfect balance between their quirks, just so we could fulfill his ambitions. I hate being a tool for him. Todoroki clenched his fists tightly, but took a second to calm down, you know, I can't remember a time when my mom wasn't crying. Izuku sharply inhaled. After a while, I don't think she could distinguish between my left side and my dad. I guess it makes sense why she'd throw boiling water onto my face. Holy shit. So that's why I can't use my left side, his quirk. I have to reach the top using just my right side. Then, I'll have denied him everything. Izuku was silent for a while so Todoroki just sighed and walked to the exit, sorry for dumping that on you. Just know that I'm not gonna make the same mistake again. I'll beat you with just my right side. I've been helped my entire life. Todoroki turned around with a curious look, huh? Izuku was looking straight at him, I mean, I've only gotten here because I had help. And my motivation isn't much compared to yours but, if I don't win, I'm just wasting the efforts of everyone who's ever believed in me. So I can't lose. That's how I'll repay them. From a nearby hall, Bakugu's gaze widened at the revelation he just eavesdropped on. Todoroki's eyes seemed to narrow, but he quickly turned around and nodded. After a delicious lunch courtesy of Lunch Rush, who is somehow an actual pro hero, and a brief moment of hilarity involving Class A's females costumes courtesy of Mineta and Kaminari, the first years gathered by the stage for an announcement by midnight. I hope that everyone enjoyed their break, and we're about to get to the recreational activities, but let's talk about the final round before anything else. Midnight twirled her flail playfully. Izuka gulped. Round 3 is almost always a one-on-one -on -one competition between the top 16 competitors. But since only 12 people actually had a score. Midnight brandished her whip with a seductive hip swing, the top 3 teams, Team Todoroki, Team Shinso, and Team Bakugu. The 12 of you are automatically in the next round. We'll hold the preliminary tournament to decide the next 4 now. The audience initially broke out into cheers before coming to a sudden stop once the last part of the announcement was processed, what? A glimmer of hope lit in Midoriya's heart. What did she say? Midnight licked her lips and smiled sensually, I know this is different from our normal rules, but since all the other teams had zero points, we're going to let the two teams that were last to lose their points fight it out to claim a spot in the finals. The four winners from those teams will move on to the third round. What? Team Midoriya and Team Tetsutetsu exclaimed. Midnight cracked her whip again and the screen changed to show timestamps next to each of the teams with zero points in descending order. 4. Team Izuku, dash 0 colon 55, Team Tetsutetsu, dash 1 colon 036, Team Monoma, dash 1 colon 06. While normally we wouldn't want to reward failure, we admittedly ran into a logistical error with only 12 finalists. Since these two teams lost their points in relatively similar time spans, we'll let them prove how deserving they are to be up here. Tokoyami raised his hand, but then why not just elevate the team to last lose their points instead? Oi, shut it you bastard! Tetsu Tetsu roared, held back only by Itsuka's ironically ironclad grip. Midnight smiled sadistically and the students felt the air grow colder, logistics aside, this is a school that brings out the best heroes possible. To that end, those of you who haven't quite lived up to our expectations just need to work that much harder to show that you're worthy to stand on this stage. With a nod, the R-rated hero switched to her normal persona like she hadn't just gone full dominatrix on the first years, anywho, we'll get started right away and then give you all another break. The matchups are dash. W8. Everyone turned to the source of the disruption, Ojiro, I'd like to drop out. What? Ojiro, what are you doing? You worked so hard for this. Izuku protested, remembering the intense training they did together. The martial artist just looked down with an angry face, the cavalry battle, I don't remember it at all. It was his quirk, I bet. I guess he means Shinso. Come to think of it, he did convince Hatsum to join his team rather easily. I know how important the sports festival is and how dumb I must look to give up a chance like this, but, everyone's here because of their strength. 
so for me to stand on the same stage without even knowing how I got here, that just seems insulting. Toru waved her pom-poms frantically, what are you talking about? If anything, this is your chance to show them what you can real Ido. Mina nodded, and by your logic, then I don't even deserve to be here. Ojiro shook his head and covered his face, it's not just that, I have to consider my honor. The girls fell silent, but seemed to accept his decision. Also why do you look like cheerleaders? Interjecting, Shoda from Shinso's team added, um, I think I'll withdraw, too. I don't remember anything either. And wouldn't someone who advanced without their own skill be against the rules anyways? Kirishima started to tear up, Jesus, these guys are really freaking manly. How, naive. The pro hero stared emotionlessly at the two withdrawals before cracking her whip, I'm incredibly turned on. The fuck did she just say? Bakugu's jaw dropped. Midnight tapped her chin, so in that case, we'll have a member from each team replace Shoda and Ojiro in the main tournament. So we only need three matches to decide the next round. Now Tetsu Tetsu interjected, actually send two members from Team Midoriya. All of my team will fight. Hey! Kendo grabbed his collar, what are you doing? Away's face bombed, the fuck is your problem? We technically ranked lower than them. I don't want any pretense either. Class 1B will prove we belong based on our skills, not some technicality. Midnight huffed, holy crap, I'm so ready to go. I'll allow it. Team Midoriya, choose two members to send forward. Yurarika was instantly at Izuku's side, much to his discomfort, Deku, you should advance. Tokoyami appeared as well, indeed. It was your opening that allowed us to move on. While nobody sparkles more than I, Monsieur Midoriya was quite luminescent. You guys. Izuku shook his head, I appreciate it, but no. Yurarika and Aoima, you two had to use your quirks to the point of exhaustion and Kaminari nearly wiped out Dark Shadow. I didn't do anything until the end. Two of you should go. The other three fell silent before Tokoyami sighed, Dark Shadow and I didn't strain ourselves too much during the cavalry battle. You two move on. Midoriya and I will see you in the dash. Yurarika and Tokoyami will move forward. Aoyama exclaimed. Got it. Midnight waved her whip to the shocked team Midoriya. Hey Aoyama, why? Tokoyami sputtered. The blonde just winked, I couldn't allow you to shine brighter than I. With a crack of her whip, Midnight called, then it's decided. The three matchups will dash. Wait. Come on. The audience practically screamed, wanting the tedium to end. Monoma only grinned, why not give us a shot too? My team was only a few seconds shy of Team Tetsu Tetsu and if we send two members of our own, then you'll have a proper preliminary tournament bracket of 4 by 4 the R-rated heroine sweat dropped, what? No, that makes no sense at all. It'll be fine with just 3 MATC dash. My team consists of only handsome young men with very loose-fitting clothing. Approved. Midnight huffed, steam erupting from her ears. Midnight, I can't back that up. Aizawa muttered from the announcer's booth, this is already contrived enough. Just do the dash, his microphone cut out. Present Mike cleared his throat, ahem. Sorry about that folks. Aizawa's mic had some static on it so I'm taking over for the management. I agree with Midnight completely. Um, I guess then Monoma and I will go forward, mostly because the others are still mad at him. Tsuburaba rubbed his head sheepishly. Midnight smiled, then it's decided. Please turn your attention to the board for the preliminary matchups. The screen flashed for a moment before it produced a single tier bracket of all eight competitors. One. Tetsu 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 vs. Itsuka Kendo. 2. Yosetsu Aways vs. Kozii Tsuburaba. 3. Yuga Aoima vs. Fumikage Tokoyami. 4. Izuku Midoriya vs. Ibra Shiyazaki. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.